Good afternoon, everyone. This is Melissa with the stockswish.com and welcome. Welcome to a spy update. I did do a QQQs update earlier today. I hadn't even glanced really at the spy, and lo and behold, the spy is even more bullish than the Qs. We actually almost got up over the high here. It looks like I bet we are up over a pre market or post market. There we go. We almost got up over the high on the day, and now I just thought we were probably gapping up tonight, and we are. So we closed at 185.82, and we got up to 186. So we're gapping up right now. It does look like we are going to follow through higher tomorrow, which was my call for the cues. Same thing with the SPY. So let's take a look at this here. So any gap up tomorrow, unless it's a crazy gap up, uh, could be bought aggressively here. We're going to rally and should make another new high tomorrow. Could happen in the pre-market tomorrow. Could happen tonight yet still, actually, because 186.15 was a high. We're not that far from it right now here at 4.46 p.m. Really, really nice show of strength in the market. And this, again, is why you don't short tops. And... I know people like to do that because they're looking at what they think is resistance. Let's just go back here a little bit. When the market actually rallied up here, it made this area. Then it rallied up again, touched in the air, didn't get over it. So people thought, oh, it's a double top. Then when it did it again, people think it's a triple top, and people look to short this because people are thinking then that the market's going to come in or change directional trend or something. I'm not sure what people think, but the market really only had a short-term pull-in. It lasted for a brief period here in January. If you shorted this for a short-term pull-in, you made money in the SPY, but know that if you ever short a strong market, the chances of you making money are low odds because at any point in time, we could have actually flipped over the high right away or the next day or the next day. Now, after the pull-in, we got bought, and then we went over the highs. But even here, I know people got stopped out here because I know people shorted this because it was another touchdown up over the number that closed with a topping tail and a red body. And I know people then thought this was another short entry. Just because something hits a level of resistance, it's not a short entry. Let me make my point here. Market, when it ran here, let's go all the way back. If you can understand what I'm saying because it's just, it's just not the right way to trade. Market ran up here. If you call this resistance, market comes in, you could short this and say it's resistance. But then you see it rallied up to another level of resistance. Then it came in, then it ran up here where you could say, well, this is resistance, but it's higher than this resistance or this resistance, but lower than this resistance. Market ran up, held here, came in, gapped up over this resistance. You could say, well, this was resistance here. It held one, two, three times, but then look, it gapped up over it came in, came down, made the resistance, came up, didn't get over it. You could say, well, this is it. This is a short. It's coming in. We're coming in. It rallies up to resistance, gaps right up over it. Rallies, rallies, makes another area. You say, okay, well, this is resistance. Comes down, gaps up again over it right away. So, I mean, you cannot continue to short resistance in a bullish market. It's never going to pay right. You short resistance in something in a downtrend. You buy support if you really want to in something that's in an uptrend. Although there's multiple areas of support, even in something that's in an uptrend. And again, this is very complex, and, and I don't want to make a two-hour video here, because you can't really buy every area of support either, even if something's in an uptrend. But to make a long story short, I know that a lot of people thought this market was toppy back there, short of this area. It helped the market to lift over the highs very quickly after this and hold the next day. And now we're going to do it again. And people keep thinking that we're extended here, and as a result, we keep going higher. And shorts, people trying to short this, thinking that we're extended, or that we're going to come in and keep, keep getting pushed out. And that keeps make, make us move higher because when shorts have to cover, it makes green. It's a buy to close. When you press it, it makes a green. It could be short covering. So what's happening is two things, one buying and two short covering. And that's pushing the market higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And that's what's happening here. And you see... But the market actually did get bought in here today because it had the nice follow through. And every 15 minute could have been bought and we closed near the high. And actually, again, we're going to gap up tomorrow morning. I just don't know where exactly. But this market is very nice and bullish. And it looks like we're just going to do it right away here tonight or tomorrow. So looking for a nice green day in the market tomorrow, last day of the week on Friday. Actually, last day of the week and last day of the month. Hope everyone had a wonderful month. It was earnings season this month in February. It was a good, solid month for trading gaps, which is what I do. 
And the interesting thing is I love to short. I love to short gaps, and it was the market was bullish here. Market was bullish here this month of February, and it was shorting this whole month, and it was a great month. So, so interesting. It really doesn't matter what side you play on as long as you know what to do. As long as you know what to do and you do it well, you can make money in both directions. I just happen to like to short more than to go long because shorts take over, the momentum takes over so fast when people panic and are in longs and want to sell out of them. But the funny thing is, the ironic thing is that I'm shorting it and doing so well in what is a bullish market for the last, you know, however many years. Five years. You know? So you, it's really just about understanding what you do, knowing what you do, and doing it well. And looking for the right stuff to play. You can't play the market every day. And if you need the market for your trades, then there's going to be a lot of days that you just don't trade. That's just, that's just all there is to it. I, I, that's why I like to trade stocks and companies because they're so specific. And I'm doing different ones every day for the most part. And it's fun. It's exciting. Now, the market's higher for tomorrow. We'll see what happens then, how we close tomorrow. That'll take us into the next week, which will be the start of the month. But actually, it looks like blue skies ahead here for the market for the first week of March. Looks like blue skies ahead. Pulling will happen, but depending on the rally, it may not be next week. Uh, and uh, we could rally for another week before we even pull in at this point because the market kind of has taken a little bit of a break here now. It's making some nice follow-through moves without tiring. I mean, this is not a tired market to me. It's so interesting. I don't know why people think things are extended. Just because you have six green bars in a row doesn't mean something's extended at all. It's actually... Uh, one second. Sorry about that. Should have turned my phone off. Uh, it's actually not extended at all because of the fact that we had the dip down. So we rallied up, came in, rallied up, came in. This dip down basically was only retraced here. So if you look at that, you see here what happened. We came down hard, came up hard, then we rested. Now we're breaking out. So I mean, this next move up could last for a week or it could last for longer. It could last for two weeks before we pull her in again. Do you see how there was a retracement and then back up? So this, like, basically washes each other out. And then you have the way it based in here. And now we're lifting higher. So it just depends how this sets up here. If we do it like crazy, huge, big green bar tomorrow, and follow through. It depends how much buying really comes in here. And you just have to wait and see it, but it is going to happen. I mean, it's happening. It's happening right now. It is going to continue to happen. This is Melissa with the stockswish.com. Have a great night, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. If you'd like more information on how to read charts and how to read the market and how to read gaps, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. The next gap class is March 8th and 9th. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.